success. Thanks, everyone. Um, I wanted to share some results from a NSF rapid project that we did with the title here. And it's basically mining the, the biomedical uh, literature in ways to try to get access uh, conveniently and some different perspectives. Here's my background, I'll not go through that. Uh, basically, we're technology watchers trying to gather data and extract some usable knowledge from it. Uh, the particular project here was exploring causes and cures for COVID through improved access to the research. And I wanna to just touch on three elements. One is what we're calling intelligent bibliometrics to try to, to extract information from these abstract texts. Second is a peek at a recommender system to do some literature-based discovery beyond the data set we're actually analyzing. And third is a dashboard to share result. Uh, our, our shorthand for this is tech mining. The data at hand here are using the, the main National Library of Medicine kind of core uh, COVID search strategy. Uh, we used this straight through for a year and a half. And I'll be talking about two different subsets. One is about 60,000 records through early October, 2020, on which we did a lot of the uh, intelligent bibliometrics type work. And the other is the most recent version of the dashboard, January 1st, to show you what it looks like right now. Okay, element number one, the tech mining is text analyses of science, technology, and innovation data resources, usually in the form of abstract records of research publication or patent, most typically. Uh, some of the things we've done here, one is look within the body of that research for what topics show accelerating attention and try to do that in a timely fashion. Won't be talking about that today. Second is tracking uh, topics over time. And here's a peek at that. Led by our colleague Yi Zhang in University of Technology, Sydney, uh, one uh, draws out by clustering the, the term usage for what are some topical clusters of interest over time. The process in, in its essence Take one time period, group the topics together based on uh, co-occurrence of terms, and then do this in successive periods, and then look at links amongst those topics. And I've got a couple of references here I won't belabor, but they're tagged on at the back of the presentation. Here's a, a zoom in on a little piece of it. Um, our latest analyses back in 2020 showed rapid spread was a topic of interest. And that had forebears in very recent treatment of infectious diseases, a little earlier to studies noting on, and then going back into some of the previous coronaviruses, some work with PCR back in 2006 concentration, tracing back to SARS back in 2003. So one can do some links over topics and over time. Our second element, the literature-based discovery. And here we've used it just for a very simple recommender system. See if there's a topic you are interested in within the COVID literature, might there be some uh, useful research to you outside that literature? And the process here, uh, we generate a data set just as a simple illustration out of about 30 or more topics, comorbidities was one that we just picked here. And then within the, the COVID literature, in this case, that's 60,000 records, looking for the documents most related to that. Then do some text analyses there to, to clean the literature that the texts up and looking for 
what terms have especially high frequency in those documents and conversely, especially low frequency, calling that a knowledge model and then going out and looking at calculations of term frequency, inverse document frequency for those terms in the, the full PubMed Medline data set. Those aren't identical, but close. And to identify ab abstract of articles that might be of interest to somebody pursuing a particular topic like comorbidity. Um, here's a little illustration, three of the topics from comorbidities where we've added in a citation count as a second criteria. So if you're high on being cited and you're using the term similar to the comorbidity usage within COVID literature, it might be of interest to you. Maybe take a look at these and it could be three articles or we could go all the way down to with loadings on the 33 million, which I don't think anybody would want. And the last element uh, I wanted to go through was taking a look at uh, our dashboard buildup. And here is the project dashboard. And within that, I'm just mentioning a, a, a vaccine bullseye that our colleagues at Bizint put together, which is interesting to track over time. I'm going to take a look at our PubMed dashboard. And that's now the spotlighting the 150,000 150, abstract records as of uh, January 1st. And there is a demo there, a couple minutes to explain how to use it. Here's some of the different fields of data available. And let me just do a, a quick pop in. Uh, here's one version where we can go in and we could spot something of interest. And I'm just going to try to spotlight. And I think we're getting some sluggish response here. Uh, research in Iran. Uh, and we might go through that and, and see what some folks over there are doing with respect to comorbidities. And we might even spot an article somewhere in here that draws our interest. And here we can pop up that abstract record. So to do things quickly there, just one other illustration. If we wanted to spotlight most recent work, and that's from December of last 2021, this is incomplete because coding, uh, categorizing still is going on, cataloging, so on. But we could go in here again and, and pick what might be of interest. Uh, let me spot, hit Columbia. And there's some of the uh, 46 articles from associated with a, an author from Columbia in the last month. So that's our demo. If anybody wants to go to the dashboard, we'd, we'd love it. It's still a work in progress. And I'm basically done. There we go, resources and finished. Thanks for your attention.